take you back to 2021, where he finished second in, M in the AL MVP. He hit 311 with 48 homers, 111 RBIs, and an OPS north of 1,000. And he said he showed up in Dunedin last year trying to do more than that. If that's what I'm giving these people now, they're expecting more. And he said he came outside the strike zone a lot more yes, last year. He still had a phenomenal season. Anyone would take it. But for him, he felt like he tried too much. So he wanted to get back to controlling the strike zone and letting his talent play for itself. So let's dive in because he's been gotten off to a nice start. The Toronto Blue Jays lineup, I love what Ross Atkins, Mark Shapiro, all the, the powers that be in Toronto, what they're doing because last year they were a little right-handed susceptible. This year their lineup not only paused this, not only did they have this monster, but you saw yesterday you got a hustle double out of Kevin Kiermeyer. There's just a lot of different ways to beat you with this Toronto offense this year. Throw in the starting staff, Romano on the back end of the bullpen. They're going to be in it the entire season. But I want to go through these at bats. You talk about controlling the strike zone for Vladdy Guerrero. If he does, he's one of the top five hitters in the game. And he does a lot of things that back in the mid-2000s with the Texas Rangers, he does a lot of things that Rudy Jaramillo, my old hitting coach, hitting coach to the stars for a lot of guys back in that time, believe in. And we'll get into it at, with a side angle, but run this real quick. This is top of the eighth. You know you're in perfect, bring that back. You are in perfect position to drive a baseball when you can take an 0-1 four-seam heater, cut the plate in half, middle away, don't cheat to anything and drive it out to dead right center field. I mean, that's, you're hitting first base. Like, that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish every time up. Run that back for me. Keep going. All the way. Keep going. Right there. Boom. Pause it. He's got the toe tap working. What do we talk about? Toe tap if you're going to load, you're loading for a purpose. You want to feel like you're getting into your backside. That's why you do it. That's why all these guys coil the back hip. They want to feel something get into the back hip, the inside of the back knee, and this almost becomes like a proverbial kickstand for their body. Almost like when Sean Casey talks about it being almost a break for you. Run it. Right, at foot contact, pause. I mean, look at him. Nothing's pulled off. The hips are still square to the pitcher. The front shoulder's still square. And now I'm just driving my bat path through the zone. Rear ends behind the baseball, finish high, and it's an opposite field homer. And then on the flip side, right, there's the same pitch, but now we're going inside with it. It's point of contact. Run that back for me real quick. It's the same exact swing, it's just different points of contact. Watch him pull his hands in on this. Boom! Ooh. Just clears that front side a little bit quicker. And now we're going deep. Hey, bring up that board, most hard hit balls. That's Rod. Take a look at this. Since wow. the start of 2022, Vlad Guerrero Jr., and, and it's by a wide margin. By the way, 14 over Jose Abreu, his own teammate, Bo Bichette, Aaron Judge, Freddie Freeman. This is the goal when you go to the plate, right? Get a pitch over to 17 inches and hit it hard. You can't worry about anything else after that. 